Welcome to the Trend Micro FTR YouTube channel. My name is Naman Huck. I am a senior threat researcher with the FTR group. Today we are introducing FTR's latest research paper, Cyber Attacks Against Intelligent Transportation Systems. A quick introduction. In October 2014, Tesla introduced their Road Ready Autopilot system. The system enables a Tesla car to autonomously detect obstacles, navigate roads, avoid pedestrians, and keep pace with traffic. This changed driving forever and created a bold new vision for how road networks will be used in the future. While we believe it will take a decade or two for fully autonomous vehicles to become everyday roadway fixtures, the number of internet-connected cars on the road is already increasing. In the industrial Internet of Things world, it is realistic to expect that someday roadways will be upgraded to smart roads that are fully integrated with today's internet-connected cars and tomorrow's autonomous vehicles. The IT security industry has been busy researching car hacking techniques and new attack vectors that enable cyber criminals to seize control of vehicle functions, steal data, or both. We wanted to study the transportation problem from a completely new angle. Because the entire road operating environment is critical to the safe operations of both modern and future vehicles, we decided to look beyond the attack ve vectors targeting connected cars and instead study cyber threats against the entire ITS ecosystem. Before proceeding, first we need to define the term ITS. Intelligent Transportation Systems, or ITS, is the application of advanced and emerging technologies and transportation to save lives, time, money, and the environment. This definition includes all modes of transportation, from ground and rail to marine and air travel. However, the scope of this research paper only covers the threat of cyber attacks against connected cars, autonomous vehicles, and smart roads as attacks on these will be highly visible, have a more immediate effect, and potentially have a disastrous impact on public safety. Highly complex systems such as integrated ITS applications require a strategic framework for design and deployment, as well as identification of future investment areas. The ITS framework architecture is the blueprint that maps out all the technical aspects of ITS and allows designers and planners to visualize the organizational, legal, and business requirements. In a nutshell, an ITS framework architecture helps make the entire ecosystem easy to manage, maintain, and extend. Compliance with the common ITS framework architecture will enable multiple applications to work in sync, even at multinational levels. There are currently three major ITS frameworks being developed globally. The European ITS Framework Architecture, the US National ITS Architecture, and the Japanese system, ITS System Architecture. Based on these three ITS frameworks, we selected a subset of ITS applications and systems that are most at risk of getting compromised by attackers. We now give a brief overview of the six ITS applications and systems that we studied in our research paper. The first is vehicles. Vehicles are a fundamental component of transportation and no ITS discussion is complete without talking about vehicles. This research focused on two types of vehicles. Connected vehicles are equipped with internet access and also has a wireless local area network which allows it to share internet access with other devices both inside and outside the vehicle. Autonomous vehicle. This is a more advanced version of the connected vehicle and one that is capable of sensing its environment and navigating without human input using a variety of technologies such as LiDAR, radar, GPS, stereoscopic cameras, etc. Roadway reporting and traffic flow controls are two sides of the same coin. ITS goals include making high volume traffic movement more efficient and improving road safety. To achieve these goals, road operators need to constantly monitor traffic and current roadway conditions. This is done using an extensive array of cameras and sensors that are strategically placed all across the roadway and which sends back data real-time to the control center. Examples include bus lane cameras, speed cameras, roadside weather stations, and vehicle detection systems. Similar to roadway reporting systems, traffic flow controls aid in making high-volume traffic more efficient as well as making roads safer. Road operators monitor traffic 
and roadway conditions in real time and use the gathered data to manage traffic flow using various flow control mechanisms. Examples include traffic signal control systems, railway crossing barriers, dynamic message signs, and automated toll collection systems. Payment applications and systems. In addition to organizing traffic movement and making road safety better, one of the major goals of ITS operators is to use the systems in place to increase the revenue stream while reducing costs. Examples include RFID tags, kiosk payment machines, and e-ticket applications. Management applications and systems are the nerve center of ITS. ITS is best described as a complex ecosystem comprising of hundreds and thousands of connected systems with a wide range of functions working cooperatively or in tandem. All these systems need to operate within defined tolerance limits for traffic to flow smoothly. Otherwise, there will be traffic jams, delays, accidents, and the likes. ITS nerve centers host, monitor, and operate the management systems controlling ITS. Examples include streetlight controls, disaster management, data storage management, emergency vehicle management, and traffic and congestion management. Finally, we have communications, applications, and systems. Information exchange is at the core of the ITS ecosystem. Data is used for making traffic flow efficient, improving road safety, increasing revenue, and reducing ecological and environmental impacts. Data is also consumed by the users of ITS services to improve their transit options and experiences. Examples include smart apps, social media, websites, road obstacle and accident alerts, etc. Now let's explore a few real-world examples of cyber attacks against ITS. On June 6, 2016, the Washington Post reported that Dallas road signs were hacked and messages about Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders and Harambe the Gorilla were posted. The Texas Department of Transportation responded to the hack message board saying they belonged to a private contractor who was investigating how they might have been hacked. On November 6, 26, 2016, the San Francisco Examiner reported that the San Francisco Municipal Transportation Agency, MUNI, was hit with a ransomware attack which displayed the hackers' ransom message on their systems. Along with this message, fare payment machines at MUNI underground stations displayed an out-of-service message. Unable to charge its customers, Muni allowed free transit rights for the day. On May 13, 2017, Radio Liberty reported that Russian Railways computers were infected by the WannaCry ransomware. WannaCry infected more than 200,000 computers in 150 countries within a day of the initial outbreak. Russian Railways confirmed that the infection was localized and rail transportation was not affected. The Telegraph reports that WannaCry also infected German train stations and passenger information monitors there were seen displaying the ransom window. Deutsche Bahn confirmed that due to a Trojan attack, there are system failures in various areas. On August 4, 2017, Autoblog reported that a group of university researchers have figured out how to hack self-driving cars by putting stickers on street signs. The researchers analyzed image classification algorithms used by vision systems in self-driving cars and then visually manipulated street signs using stickers in order to trick the machine learning models into misinterpreting them. In one example, they used stickers to trick the vision system of an autonomous car into reading a stop sign as a 45 miles per hour sign instead. The consequences of such simple attacks can be devastating in the real world especially now that we have semi-autonomous driving capabilities in many road vehicles. Where there are opportunities, there are also perpetrators. We have identified six categories of perpetrators who pose a direct threat to ITS. Nation states. The primary goal for state-sponsored attacks is to steal intellectual property or to gain competitive advantage. But in certain instances, for example during war, one nation can sabotage another nation's ITS infrastructure. Criminal gangs. Highly skilled hacking teams funded and controlled by organized criminal gangs target victims using different schemes such as ransomware, phishing, etc. to generate revenue for the gangs. Hacktivists. Internet activists who attack cyber assets to draw attention to their political causes and tend to choose highly visible, high-profile targets. Cyber terrorists. Their goal is to launch disruptive or destructive cyber attacks to cause physical destruction of property or loss of life, as well as spread fear. Insiders. 
Insider motives can be tricky to decipher. They act against organizations that they are or were part of and indirectly act against their own interests. Insiders could be motivated by money, ideology, coercion, ego, revenge, and politics. Unscrupulous operators. The primary users of ITS infrastructure are the drivers on the roads. This includes both regular drivers and commercial vehicle operators. It's not inconceivable to imagine scenarios where drivers and commercial operators try to hack and game the system to save on fines and fees, to get ahead in traffic, do competitive sabotage, etc. The key motivator for the vast majority of cyber attacks that we see daily is money. But in the ITS world, not every perpetrator that will attack the ITS ecosystem will be motivated by money. ITS systems are highly visible and attacks against them will be high impact. That itself is a key motivator for many of the perpetrators. We have identified five broad objectives and profit sharing models that motivate perpetrators to attack the ITS ecosystem. Ransom. Attackers can encrypt data and systems and demand a ransom payment to release decryption keys. Data theft. Perpetrators can steal proprietary data, intellectual property, business operations data, shipment data, vehicle tracking information, etc., and monetize the stolen data in various ways. Information warfare. This is a broad topic that encompasses everything from hacktivism to information pollution for financial gains. Some of the information attacks that we have identified are as follows. Denial of service attacks against ITS infrastructure to knock them offline. Hacktivism, which posts political protest or prank messages. Vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle information poisoning. Map hacking can cause autonomous vehicles to veer off course. System gaming, gaming and theft. One of the most attractive profiteering models for perpetrators would be to steal goods or valuables inside the vehicles or the vehicles themselves. Others may try to exploit ITS systems to avoid paying service charges. Revenge and terrorism. Terrorist attacks where the attacker drives into innocent people and kills them have recently been making disturbing news headlines around the world. If the driving functions of an autonomous vehicle can be compromised, then there is every possibility that the vehicles may be used as weapons in terror attacks. Revenge is the other big motivation. The recent Bridgegate scandal, which made headlines in the U.S., was motivated by political revenge. Staffers behind the decision to close traffic lanes on the George Washington Bridge without any prior public notifications, as stipulated by the law, were later convicted by the courts. We pit and hold ITS attack vectors into three broad overlapping categories, physical, wireless, and network attacks. The overlap between each category of attacks represents how the attack vectors can fluidly transition from one category to the next, or how different categories of attacks can be changed together to successfully compromise the ITS devices and systems. Physical attacks. ITS infrastructure sits physically exposed on roadways and roadsides, making them accessible to anyone who walks up to them. Attack vectors which abuse ITS ease of physical access includes connecting to exposed ports, example USB, serial, PS2, etc. Man-in-the-middle man man attacks by connecting to exposed wires or cables to intercept data, connecting a removable storage device and installing malware loaded on the device, etc. Wireless attacks. Vehicle-to-vehicle, vehicle-to-infrastructure, and infrastructure-to-infrastructure wireless communications will form the backbone of future ITS operations. Wirelessly hacking ITS infrastructure will pose a major IT security challenge for ITS operators. Attack vectors that leverage wireless transmissions include sniffing wireless transmissions, electronic jamming of wireless transmissions to disrupt operations, using vehicles built in Wi-Fi to access the CAN bus, and such. One of the attack vectors that kept on reappearing in our analysis is the abuse and compromise of internet-exposed ITS infrastructure. Internet-exposed ITS systems, discoverable via an IoT search engine like Shodan, are vulnerable to everyday cyber attacks such as DDoS attacks. We put theory to test and attempted to discover internet-exposed ITS infrastructure in Shodan. We searched for the term NTCIP, short for National Transportation Communications for Intelligent Transportation Systems Protocol, a mouthful, in Shodan and discovered 63 NTCIP compliant devices exposed online in the US. 
The devices discovered were either Econolite ASC3 traffic light controllers or Skyline Dynamic Message Sign controllers. These controllers were connected to the internet via wireless modem. The organization names listed are that of the ISPs who provide the wireless modems and not the operators who own operate these controllers. Please note, no vulnerabilities were discovered in Econolite or Skyland products. Simply, the operators have configured their controllers to be accessible via the internet. An internet exposed device doesn't mean the system was compromised, but rather poorly configured. On the flip side, by virtue of being exposed on the internet, the system is vulnerable to compromise. We also find that perpetrators can exploit known vulnerabilities in the wireless modem to potentially access and compromise the connected ITS device. To better understand the cyber risks ITS is facing, we decided to threat model the six ITS applications and systems that we introduced earlier. Threat modeling is a form of risk assessment that models aspects of the attack and defense sides of a system, environment, etc. It provides a systematic approach to identifying, classifying, and quantifying the amount of risk presented by each evaluated threat. For our threat modeling exercise, we use the industry standard DREAD threat model. Qualitative risk analysis is opinion-based. It uses rating values to evaluate the risk level. The DREAD threat model can be used to perform qualitative risk analysis. We arrived at the risk rating for a given threat by asking the following questions. Damage potential. How great is the damage to the assets? Reproducibility. How easy is it to reproduce the attack? Exploitability. How easy is it to launch an attack? Affected users. As a rough percentage, how many users are affected? Discoverability. How easy is it to discover this threat? For our threat modeling exercise, we group the ITS applications and systems according to an impact severity level that we defined to calculate their overall risk ratings. We defined L1, applications and systems that directly affects public safety and critical operations. L2, applications and systems that affect daily operations and revenue generation. L3, applications and systems that support L1, L2 and the organization itself. Now we present uh, some high-level um, observations from our threat modeling uh, exercise. Of the total number of threats that we modeled, 53.85% were rated as high risk, 40% were rated as medium risk, and 6.15% were rated as low risk. Of the high risk threats, 71.4% were network attacks, 31.4% were wireless attacks, and 25.7% were physical attacks. Please note that these numbers don't sum up to sum up to greater than 100, and that's because one of the, each of the attack vectors can fluidly flow from one to the other to the other. Denial of service attacks, electronic jamming of wireless transmissions, vulnerability exploitation, and credential brute forcing attacks all scored as high risk in our model. Sensational attacks such as malicious firmware installed via over-the-air updates, uh, remote hijacking of vehicle control, sending incorrect improper commands to ITS devices, and sending spoofed vehicle-to-infrastructure and vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle messages all scored either medium or low risk. Overall, we discovered that network cyber attacks pose the most serious threat to ITS devices systems, followed by wireless attacks and finally physical attacks. Many of today's road networks are quickly getting congested because of the, global, of the current global trends in industrialization and urbanization. These road networks are limited by plans made during another era when the population size was smaller and urban planners failed to anticipate today's population boom. In the more densely populated cities, there is very little actual physical space available to add extra capacity to the existing road networks. Instead of building new roads, ITS technology allows municipalities to significantly increase the utilization of existing roads at a fraction of the cost of building new roads. On the other hand, existing road infrastructure is aging and reaching their end of life. Municipalities have to replace these aging roads because they are no longer deemed safe for daily use. Instead of building more of the same, governments are now opting to build smart roads to future-proof themselves. 
A 2013 discussion paper from the University of Toronto's Monk School of Global Affairs summarizes consultants and analysts' prediction for autonomous vehicle adoption. There's a general consensus that by 2025, autonomous vehicles will become everyday roadway fixtures, as we can see from the table. ITS today is still in an early development phase, where we are envisioning solutions, building proof of concepts, testing boundaries, defining parameters, defining tolerances, identifying threats, capacity planning, creating legislations, etc. If the predictions hold true, then we can expect a massive transportation revolution over the coming three decades. Adoption of autonomous vehicles will fuel big investments in ITS infrastructures, as smart roads will be needed for all transportation needs. And that ends our quick tour of cyber threats faced by the ITS ecosystem. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found our research findings both interesting and informative. For a more detailed analysis of ITS ecosystem cyber threats, please download our white paper. The link for the paper is in the description of this video. Thank you very much.